Welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Tuet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Eric Hellman. I am so, so, so excited. I've been trying to get Eric on the channel for so long, and I finally got him! And we're all in town for Google I.O., so this is kind of like the calm before the storm that is going to be the next three and a half days, so... It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. It's going to be really good, as I generally is. But anyway, uh, Eric, uh, where are you based and how did you get started in Android? So I'm uh, living in Sweden, uh, currently in Stockholm, uh, just north of Stockholm. And how I got started? Was that? Yeah, so yeah. 10 years ago, <laughs> a decade, I started working at Sony Ericsson, it was called then, mm -hmm. later called Sony Mobile. And I got into their Android project when they started. So uh, the first Sony Ericsson mobile phones with Android, that was, I was part of that. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. And you've been doing it ever since 10 years? Pretty much with some small intermissions of C Sharp. But that's okay. I was a C Sharp person too. It's all right, yeah. but we're, we're in Android and Kotlin and everything else yeah, now, so yeah. things are good. So I'm really excited to have Eric on the channel today because he's written several great articles and given some great talks on a topic, which... I know has some interest in the Kotlin community, especially, and some interest in the Android community, and that is coroutines. So yeah, it, I feel like coroutines are this thing, like I know at last year at Kotlin Conf, it felt like JetBrains really, really, really wanted everyone to know that coroutines were really awesome. Um, but I think like a lot of people just don't know what they are and what we can do with them in Android. So Eric, what are coroutines? I think the easiest way to explain what coroutines is, it's the solution to the async problem we have in Android. Yes, yes. So it's a new way, well, it's new for Kotlin and Android way of doing asynchronous operations mm -hmm. and still be able to write your code in a sort of synchronous syntax. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to read and easier to follow, and it solves a lot of the problems that we have. So how do exactly do they work? Is, I mean, is it like, what are you actually building when you build a coroutine? Yeah, so the coroutines is actually a really old concept. It mm -hmm. was actually existing before we had threads and processes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a way to do like time division between several functions, mm -hmm. and the, the originator from it said like coroutines is actually like the general form of what subroutines are, or something like that. I can't mm -hmm. remember the quote exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and the easiest way to explain it for an Android developer is that it is a function that can be suspended. That means it does not block. Mm -hmm. So when it suspends, it continues running on the same thread with the rest of the stuff it has doing there. And I made an analogy in the in my uh, talk in uh, Android Makers and in Turin, where I compare a coroutine with an activity. So activity is started, it runs stuff, and then it can be suspended. And it can save its state in one of these bundles. Mm -hmm. And you can think of the coroutines as a similar thing. A coroutine could be compared to an activity. It can be suspended at any time mm -hmm. and then resumed, and it has a state. Mm -hmm. So that's easiest way to think of it. Yeah, I, I really like that. So um, rather than think about it as like a block, uh, blocking a thread, which I, as I understand is expensive and part of the benefits of coroutines, right? Yeah. That you don't have like the overhead of spending an actual uh, thread that, yeah, it has this little state and it just kind of stops and says, okay, I'm sitting back here for a while. And then it returns at some point later Yes. Um, with all of its state and just is ready to resume whatever it's doing. It's really cool. Yeah, it is very cool. And then you still have threads and you can decide what thread a mm -hmm. coroutine runs on and you can switch a thread in the middle mm -hmm. of a coroutine. There's lots of these really fancy stuff you can do. And thanks to that, you can build some really powerful DSLs and syntax in uh, utilities and in there. I'm glad so. you mentioned that because actually Eric's written a couple of very, very great articles on coroutines, which I think really help kind of illuminate not just like what coroutines are, but also how to use them on Android. And I, I feel like, I mean, I've been looking into coroutines a little bit uh, uh, last like year, and I think they're really neat. And, and, and all the stuff that, you know, you just mentioned is really cool. But I, I think sometimes asynchronous programming feels like not like a solved problem on Android, but like mm. we have things like, okay, async tags, but uh, like ArcJava, for example. And I think the hard part in trying to play with coroutines is trying to figure out where they fit. Um, and you had a really great example of how to use them for, I guess, um, communicating between like work and kind of and kind of spinning off the UI stuff. Um, can you talk a little bit about where we could use coroutines in Android? So what, I, what I've discovered over the years, I, I do a lot of teaching in Android and I find that the t students, regardless of their level previously, have a problem doing the async stuff on Android. Yeah, totally. So 
uh, I was trying to investigate if I could use the coroutines, thanks to the suspending function uh, mm -hmm. work, to be able to start something on the background thread mm -hmm. and then move back to the UI, UI thread mm -hmm. and then do the automatic cleanup and handling, error handling, and everything yeah. that actually we can do with RxJava, but that requires a lot of operators and yeah. stuff yeah. like that. And it turned out that it works really well. So I made a small DSL, a domain specific language in Kotlin, like them do something on the background. Uh, load then do something on the background mm -hmm. um, it works really nice and it turned out to be really simple to do mm -hmm. much thanks to the uh, lifecycle uh, API yeah and I, I think that's actually another thing that I really liked is that a uh, part of like the the difficulty of doing asynchronous programming is the injured life cycle. Like, yeah, we want something on the background thread, but things they have to be on the main thread. But oh my gosh, if you're in a fragment, what if the fragment is safe state? All that kind of stuff. And I thought you had a really great solution for that in your DSL. Yes. So basically, thanks to extension functions in Kotlin and the lifecycle API and the architectural components, mm -hmm. you just like hook them up together in a really nice way. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's a lifecycle. Uh, the lifecycle owner is an interface implemented both by an activity mm -hmm. and the fragment. Mm -hmm. So you can use this DSL both in those UI contexts. It's, mm -hmm. and it, it just turned out perfectly. It's like match made in heaven. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what do you think is, I mean, can you think of any, like in general, like good use cases for people to kind of start playing around with like coroutines in their Android apps? Yeah. So that's the, if you go to the GitHub for mm -hmm. uh, link for uh, Kotlin coroutines, they, they have a nice introduction there. You start with a launch function, which is a builder for coroutines, which basically is a fire and forget. Mm -hmm. And then you move on to the async, which is like you return a deferred, which is like the JavaScript promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you basically start building with these things and the, you know, you can call them from your activity or stuff, whatever. You can also just take my DSL and implement it yourself. It's not much code. Uh, I think that's the best way to start for an Android developer, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so all the code is out there on my article and GitHub and everything. Yeah. Do, do you have any opinions on whether, like, okay, I, I guess a lot of people would ask, is this a replacement for RxJava? Is it just kind of a situational thing? Like, how do you, how have you found integrating it with like kind of the other things that we have? Yeah, so there is an extension to Kotlin coroutines for reactive streams in oh. RxJava. So you can actually use the, all the powerful operators you have in RxJava and then just move over them to running on coroutines. Uh, and that works. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're going to see. Uh, RxJava is not going away. Uh, the, the really powerful uh, operator for combining streams and working with streams of events is you know, it's not going away. Yeah, it's, they're, they're um, valuable, yeah, for sure. So it's not going to replace it. I think for things like one-shot operations where you just like load the data and then show it in my list or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that might uh, be something that uh, coroutines replaces RxJava, but mm -hmm. then already we have live data for that. So That's true, that's true. I, I think it will be a challenge from going from here on out, figuring out like where we want to do what, but that's, that's really, really cool. Um, is there any kind of like challenges that you had or that you anticipate people will have with coroutines that you can give them some help on or, or I don't know, just any stumbling blocks that you had. Yeah. So if you are used to like a sync away from C sharp, yeah. it's easier to grasp the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Or if you work with promises in JavaScript, it's also a little bit easier. But if you have a pure Java background and are fairly new to Kotlin, mm -hmm. there are much, a lot of new concepts here that might be challenging to get uh, get into there are a lot of terminology mm -hmm. you have to learn what a continuation is mm -hmm. and stuff like that but uh, once you read through the like the first article uh, on the from JetBrains on the uh, coroutines github site mm -hmm. it's it kind of like falls into place and once you start playing with it it's 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 really nice you, you'll see that it's much easier to get into this than it is for rxjava yeah, I, our shop is definitely kind of like, it's it's kind of weird. It's like a different kind of uh, way to bend your brain, right? Our shop is yeah. kind of reactive, and I had to get used to that. But it's almost like the coroutines, because you write them just like other like kind of imperative code, just like straight in, just like, oh, I, it's it's kind of weird to kind of imagine how things flow, yeah, right? Yeah, because exactly. it's, it's all in line, but it's not. It's not like synchronous. It's like inline, but not synchronous. It's kind of yeah, weird. Yeah, you, you, you had a great term there, the imperative programming. You, you write it like that, and this is how people think. I mm -hmm. mean, everything else that we work with in the world, like if you, you're cooking, you have a recipe, you do right. one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. That's how we think all the time. So this mm -hmm. is also why asynchronous programming and reactive programming is hard for developers to get into. It's really challenging. And I think this is something that will make it easier. 
Yeah, because because you can do you can kind of program as we're used to. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, and, and then I think some trying trying to follow it might be a little bit easier in some respects. So like Eric has. Eric has actually several great talks. I went to a talk uh, two years ago at Mobile Era where Eric also talked about kind of asynchronous programming and concurrency. Yeah. So you should check that out as well. Um, but yeah, well, thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today. Thank you. It was great being here. Oh, it's, I'm so happy to finally uh, like too. have you on the channel. <laughs> um, also kind of like a uh, awful like self plug. My speaking partner, Christine and I gave a talk about Kotlin stuff and she actually gave a really cool background on coroutines and, and how they work under the hood and about continuations and about the whole kind of them being a state machine. Great talk must Aww, see thank you um but yeah I, I and i think finding out how they worked on the back end was really neat i, I think the activity analogy is so great it is um, it, it, it yeah, i was a little bit unsure about it but it worked really great when i talked about it and i talked to the like the attendees mm -hmm. to talk later and they were like oh, i got it now and yeah. there was actually people tweeting about that so yeah. i'm very happy yeah and, and i guess like this is the like the suspension function or suspension points you can kind of relate to on start on stop kind of as yeah, like exactly. points where you kind of exactly. like where things kind of change around and you have yeah. a chance to do other stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like definitely uh, please check out our talk, especially Christina's part on coroutines, but check out all of Eric's, uh, all of Eric's articles and code. Um, I, I was reading them on the plane to IO 18 because I was trying to like do, you know, do prep for this interview. And <laughs> it's just really great. And I, I feel like I, even after we were researching it for our talk, I still am having a hard time figuring out where to put them. But now I have a whole bunch of ideas. Um, I love channels. Like definitely check out the part on Eric's article about channels um, and, and just how he uses them. It's really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, sorry, again, thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Um, and thank y'all, and we'll see you next time. Bye.